Do you love great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like new stuff before anybody else, if you like to keep your finger on the pulse, if you like the future and want to be in it, you keep on listening because we'll start in a minute. Uh, tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Uh, tech webcast. Because technology it moves so fast. Tech webcast. Ha, stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah! Tech, tech, tech. Tech webcast. Ha, ha. Tech, tech, tech. Tech webcast. Let's go! It's a Merry Christmas. Welcome to episode 318 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 13th of December 2014. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at midday Melbourne time. Please rate us on iTunes and like us at facebook.com forward slash Tech Webcast. Follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast. Your hosts today are Brad, Jennifer, Jacob, Steve, Belinda, and sitting in with us today from Google Plus Week is Dan McDermott. Our special guest today is from just around the corner in Melbourne, Australia. Akuncha Shakara is here to talk about acons.com and their wearables inspired for style, simplicity, and intelligence. How are you doing today, Brad? Mr. Andrew, how are you, mate? Welcome back. Thank you, mate. I am doing a lot better now. Had a few uh, few weeks out. Had some dental issues to adhere to, but I am ready to go, mate. Good stuff, mate. We all missed you. Uh, I missed being here. How's your week been? Yeah, really busy actually. I've just moved into a new house. So sort of uh, we moved two days ago. So just trying to settle in and unboxing and things. But yep. Christmas is coming up. So it's a great time of year. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. How was your moving experience? Was it fun or was it bad or did you have any fun? Oh, gee, I don't think you could ever call moving fun, Brad. It was uh, late nights and boxing and running around and there's, there's another house with a lot of cleaning to do at the other end. But we'll get oh, well, there. Okay. All right. Well. Good luck with that one. How's your week been, Brad? Yeah, good, mate. It's been good and uh, just getting ready to do the podcast for today and uh, then two weeks break and then Christmas and then, uh, yeah, back of the end in January. Absolutely. And with some more great guests coming up in, the, in 2015, we've got Blinda on. Welcome, Blinda. Welcome back. Hi. How are you going? Good. How's your week been? Uh, pretty busy at work. Yeah, just winding things up. I've just got one more week to go, then I've got about five weeks off. So Sweet. What do you got planned for you? That'd be good. What do you got planned for your week? Um, so, I'm not sure yet. I might go somewhere, somewhere that I haven't been before. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Sweet. Yeah. Enjoy so that. Probably watch Foxtel. <laughs> yes. Probably catch it. up on some shows or something. Was it, was it a plug to them or? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Nah. Um, Dan McDermott's back. Welcome, Dan. Good to be here. Good to be back. Good to have you on, mate. How's your week been and how's Google Plus week? The show We're doing great. Uh, that show, the our Android Week show, and uh, I just I published a newspaper here in Virginia, mm-hmm. and I just finished that at about four a.m. this morning. So I'm wow. a little groggy, but I've Easy. managed to keep up with some tech stories. I'm not sure how you do it all, mate. It's busy, busy, yeah, busy week, busy. And uh, your show's coming out very soon. What time does your show start? <clears throat> right after this, uh, I guess around the time that this one posts. Um, we normally start at eight thirty nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, in the U.S. Good stuff. And it's on YouTube Live. Yep, good stuff. And who do you have on that each week? Um, Alan Furstenberg, mm-hmm. who's the co-author of a book on developing for Google Glass. And he's the first person ever to be certified by Google as a certified Glass developer. Oh, wow. And then we have Kadeus Kalut, who's a um, tech guy in California, does a bunch of things and has a lot of money and is really interesting. And then yeah. Pam Adger, who's just awesome. Yeah, Pam's great. Yeah. Nice lady. Uh, who else do we have on? We got uh, Jacob on. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Brad. How's your week been, mate? It's been all right. Okay. okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. And uh, any highlights for your week, Jacob? What, you, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing, but I, I've been, 
I'm waiting on one of my Christmas gifts from one of my secret Santas okay, in here. Okay, let's not go there. Um, okay, let's go. That's supposed to be a surprise. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't say who. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have mentioned that. Okay, let's go to uh, Steve. Welcome, Steve. Hey, how you doing this week? How's your, how's your week? Uh, been, it could have been, been better. Uh, uh, somebody hit my house with their, their car. Well, I've been we'll talking a little bit about well, it in the pre-show, but uh, so... Uh, process of uh getting that fixed now so yeah that must cost a lot of money is that gonna cost a lot of money to fix? um it could be because uh a lot of times they tend to the appraisers uh run the uh higher than normal because there, there could be a lot of hidden damage that you don't know about so oh. the fencing itself may cost uh thousands just to replace all the fencing jeez Interesting. And how's your wedding? How's your wedding, Steve? Oh, it was real good. In fact, um, di uh, didn't we talk about it before? Uh, I do got some pictures though. I can show you guys uh, if you're on the live version here. Uh, Andrew and um, Dan and they've got video on. So can you bring their video up at all in the video version or not? Um, what's that? Andrew's got his video on. Can you bring his video? Ah, uh, I, I doubt it because uh, I get some really cruddy uh, okay, internet. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. All right. Okay. Jennifer's back on. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, Brad. How are you doing? I'm good. How's your week been? It's been great. I just got back from my staycation. I took a couple of little local trips, but uh, I took a, a whole week off from work just, you know, just to use up the vacation time before the end of the year, right? And, and get some things done. So it was really nice. Very refreshing. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. You, now, um, what about something? You ready for Thank Christmas? You. I am. What's yeah. that? Sounds about Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the Sons of Anarchy season finale have, has happened. And I guess we shouldn't discuss any spoilers for people mm. that might not have had a chance to see it yet. But and as the season finale, I'm sorry, the series finale. Series, yeah. yeah, series finale. And it was, you know, I knew something big was going to happen. It was definitely pretty huge and, and upsetting. But, you know, that's the way it should have gone out, I guess. And so I don't know. I liked it. D did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, great, great uh, last episode. Yeah, yeah. I hate to see it go. It was a fantastic yeah. series, and you know, so it's it's always sad when you see awesome series like yeah. that go away. I, w I wish they would make one more season. What like season? Yeah, they could totally do another season. I don't know why they stopped it when they did. I mean, they could keep on going for another five years. You yeah, know? they could. Yeah. Yeah, they could. They could. Uh, and also, we have a guest on today, Andrew. Yes, Brad, we do have a guest on. Uh, where are we? We have Akansha Shakara. Have I pronounced that correctly? Akasha, welcome. Akasha. Yeah. Hi, everyone. How Great are you? to be here. Hello. Um, and yeah, you've done a good job. It's Akansha Shakara. Close enough. Okay. Shakara, okay. Very good. So, um, no, it's fantastic to have you on the show. And I believe you're here to talk about what you do in technologies and a little bit about wearables as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't definitely. wait to share. And you were on that startup show too, weren't you? Yes. So we won the pitch contest for yeah. episode three. So we yep. made it to the finals, which are being held in Feb. Oh, nice one. Um, fantastic. Episode three is, will be released in January yeah. on YouTube. Can't, can't wait to see it. And Sally uh, uh, actually told me about you and that's why, we, that's why you're on. So, yeah. Awesome. I like yeah, we Sally. had Sally on the show a couple months ago. She's yep. fantastic, and yep. uh, we're a big fan of that startup show filmed right here in Melbourne. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, let's go. Let's go to the news then, and uh, uh, let's play the news intro. Thanks, Brad. And in the news today, first story coming from ComputerWorld.com, and it is about the Sony hack. FBI is calling the Sony hack an organized hack, but it is declining to name the source or finger North Korea. So they have d denied to point any fingers, and the... Uh, assistant Director of FBI's Cyber Division, Joseph Damaris, says 
to quote, I won't touch on the attribution piece because we're still working very hard on that. And uh, that he thinks that most of us are shocked. This is, I think most of us are shocked at the sophistication of the breach of Sony. Uh, fingers are pointing to North Korea. It's sort of surprising that a country like North Korea, which is sophisticated in a few areas, but not very sophisticated in most, would have such an amazing ability to turn a large company into a knot. Um, Schumer uh, is referring to the speculation that North Korea was behind the Sony hack, and that's crippling its employee where they crippled their employees' computers and leaked gigs of internal documents and some embarrassing revelations, actually, to the public. Uh, they also released um, something about the upcoming film, Sony's upcoming film called The Interview, which is a comedy whose plot revolves around an assassination attempt against the country's dictator of um, Korea. It's um, Kim Jong-un for North Korea. So the North Korean government has denied any responsibility, but it still plotted the hack as a righteous deed um, of its supporters and sympathizes in a statement from from the National Defense Commission, the group that controls the country's huge military. And the statement was released by the Korean Central News Agency mouthpiece on Sunday. And moving on to the next story, coming from Google Plus, Rhett Robinson writes about Hangouts. They have released a new Hangouts, which is smarter, faster, and a lot more fun. So the new uh, update for the Hangouts app for Android makes it easier to your for you to express yourself. You can do things with stickers, for example, some new stickers from penguins to pirates, koalas and cats and so on and so forth. They have 16 new sticker packs and more to come. And they also are allowing you to give your video calls some extra flair with video filters added. And you can add those filters with just a swipe of during a video call to add those new styles. And they've made it convenient and easy to start conversations with your friends and family. You just confirm your phone number so your friends already have your digits, can find you more easily in Hangouts. And you can know when your friends are ready to chat now with the last seen timestamps. So you never have to say, are you there? Hangouts also introduced something new. It's uh, smart suggestions right within your conversation. So if you're trying to meet up with friends in real life and someone asks, where are you? Hangouts can now understand what you need and offer to help. You'll see a one tap option to share your location right in the conversation Without you having to hunt around in a map, drop a pin, and send your position. You can try all the new features by updating the Hangout app on your Android device. And that update rolled out just, uh, I believe it was two days ago, actually. So take a look for it. Also in the news coming from Neowin.com, Microsoft buys hockey app and they make it easier to test apps, which but it's not has nothing to do with hockey. So Microsoft has acquired Hockey App, and the terms of the deal were not disclosed. While the name of the company implies sports, hockey, the company actually makes it easy to test and distribute apps for all of the major mobile applications, or platforms rather, for beta testing. Microsoft has been using the service internally for some time, specifically for, for, with Skype, and the acquisition makes a lot of sense for the Redmond-based company. The next story coming from gizmodo.com. Apple is pulling a bunch of its neatest iOS 8 apps. So remember when Apple went after that handy note-taking widget, a popular app that's one of the first truly useful widgets for iOS 8? Well, it turns out Apple's pulling all kinds of apps that take advantage of new features in iOS 8 after, even after they've been approved to be in the App Store. And developers are getting pretty upset. The Guardian published a lengthy report on the trend, and the paper names the following apps as vic victims of Apple's new unpredictable app store. First one here is one called Transmit, which is an FTP program that allows you to save files to your iCloud drive. And then PCalc, which is a calculator app and widget that looks a lot like the native iOS uh, calculator. And there's an app called Drafts, which is a writing app that in includes buttons in an accompanying widget. And Launcher, an app that makes it easier to launch apps from the notification center. 
Why Apple is doing this is a mystery. At first glance, it appears that Apple is trying to kill apps that challenges its own. But off, upon closer examination, the trend seems to point to some confusion about the new App Store guidelines. Since widgets and extensions are new to iOS 8, there are all sorts of new rules that Apple has written to make these work the way that they want. It just seems that like maybe not all of these rules... Uh, new rules are written down or consistent and it's kind of a bad thing for the developers who are making useful things, getting them approved, and then watching Apple pull the rug out from under them. Next story coming from TheVerge.com about Microsoft. They're giving away 100 free albums as MP3s, including one from U2. That's right. Microsoft's Music Deals app launched in October, and it has been a pretty impressive way of obtaining music. 101 albums were priced at $1.99 or less initially, and Taylor Swift's new release, uh, 1989, debuted for only $0.99 cents in a promotional period. But now Microsoft is actually giving music away. 100 albums are now free, including hits like Dr. Dre's 2001, Eminem's The Marshall Mathers LP2, Rihanna's Unapologetic, Kanye West's Graduation, and Lady Gaga's The Fame. All of the free albums are available as MP3s, so you're free to use them on any device you want. And all 100 are available until December 15th, which is very soon. So if you're interested, check out the Music Deals app and... And Xbox Music in U.S. only. And there's even, uh, they also have a YouTube album that's on there as well. All right, moving on. The next story from ComputerWorld.com. Apple and IBM, and they are the newest, the new enterprise IT. So Apple and IBM have introduced their autumn collection of elegant, contextual, transactional, enterprise class apps designed to bring intelligent intelligence to business in the big data age. By combining their skills in the enter- in enterprise integration, analytics, and user interface design, IBM and Apple hope to build solutions for tomorrow's mobile enterprise, and it seems to be working. Some may miss the time of complexity masked by the seeming simplicity of the app interfaces the partners revealed this week. They'd be so stupid to do so, as these are good examples of taking information from multiple sources, contextualizing it, and wrapping inside an accessible and transactional layer. Moving on to another story coming from Spotify.com. Spotify has now introduced top tracks in your network. So one of the uh, streams now that you'll see is that you can see the new top tracks that your entire network is listening to. So so if you're interested in seeing what your friends are listening to and and the top tracks in the network, take a look for this new feature. It's a chart that shows the most played songs amongst the people that you follow. Next story coming from Mashable.com about YouTube. Uh, YouTube, the YouTube app on the Apple TV has gotten a few big upgrades, including full access to all the video sharing site's content library. Apple's set-top box now includes all YouTube videos, and in the past, the catalog was limited and didn't include much of YouTube's most more popular content. Searching for a popular music video, for example, might yield results for parodies and covers, but not the song from the original artist. But that's not a problem anymore, according to YouTube. The YouTube app update for Apple TV also includes predictive search function, personalized recommendations, and the option to subscribe to accounts directly through the set-top box. And that is it, Brad. Great news, Jennifer. Thank you for doing the news each week. Yeah, sure. Thanks for picking the stories. Uh, that's from Jacob and myself. Well, Jacob, All right. Both of them, actually. Okay, cool. Um, Andrew, have you checked out the Apple TV? I'm going to go to you first about the YouTube app. Have you checked out the new YouTube app yet? I have not, but um, it's great to see that it's there. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Apple TV, and um, I, I really think that's going to be a player in the future. Yeah, Obviously, definitely. Their, their main limiting uh, function is just trying to get content through that because a lot of the content is sort of exclusively provided through other um, you know, platforms, mm. pay TV, these sorts mm. of things. But if, if Apple can actually really get some great content through um, you know, that unit, I think it's, it's a big chance at being a major player. I mean, I, I use uh, Netflix through it and, um, yeah, I check uh, YouTube through it. No, it was only the other day I was trying to watch something through YouTube that I 
saw on my phone. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll chuck it through the Apple TV. And um, I couldn't find it on there, so I ended up having to pair it and, and so forth. But that's, You could probably that's air, airplay it as well. Do you use airplay? Yeah, I did. I ended up airplaying it. But sometimes it's nice just to do a quick search and run it directly through um, through that device. Yeah. So it's, yeah, um, yeah, they're really good. And I'll just quickly touch on too, the Apple and IBM Alliance. I think that is timed really well and I think that's going to be a massive thing in the future. I think those two companies, if you take IBM stranglehold on the business market and then you take Apple stranglehold on user experience, I think that's going to prove um, quite a successful alliance. All right, cool, man. Yeah, make sure you check out the new YouTube. That's really nice too. Yeah, well, I'll do that for sure. And uh, all right, let's go to uh, Dan. What about you? Do you have any views in them stories at all, mate? Um, okay, so the Spotify thing and or Microsoft giving away albums, and we saw, of course, Apple gave you two yep. album away with, with mixed reviews uh, about the way that they did it. This is interesting because it, it's uh, – I saw – there's a wonderful interview with Jeff Jarvis, and I think it's Shane Smith, the founder of Vice, Vice Media. And it's about an hour long, and if you look, it happened in the last week or so. But it's wonderful. And they talk about content. He says they're a content factory, and they do really good stuff. He, they all, all, all use young people. And their business model is that they create a bunch of footage. Like they did a famously recently went to hang out with the ISIS soldiers. And they got a guy from Palestine or the Palestinian Authority to do it because he could get in and, more importantly, get out, out alive. And so they got permission and they hung out with ISIS for a few days and they got hours and hours of footage. So he said, what you can do with that, you can release it on YouTube and they have the most subscribed to news channel on YouTube and that they can maybe turn it into a part of their special for HBO Then they can make it into a full length feature movie. They Vodafone is buying content from them. They have a, a deal with uh, what's the, the teen sexting app? Uh, Snapchat. Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they got a deal there. They they have a news show on there, and they said he said it's it's the most watched news show in the world, and it disappears every time. Uh, so this is kind of the same thing. It's neat for content producers, and I am one as a newspaper publisher. Uh, that all these outlets, in order to get when they're offering a commodity service, I say commodity, that's not fair, but like Apple versus iOS versus Android versus BlackBerry versus Windows Phone, that if, if or and all the desktop platforms and and et cetera that there's a, a new market in these new areas for good original content. And you saw the spat with Spotify and Taylor Swift, and mm -hmm. now she's doing a deal with these guys. So that's interesting. On the Sony thing, I saw that's a fascinating story. Did North Korea do it? I think the IPs, they could have been spoofed. I, I don't know that they have the sophistication. And as the article points out, Senator Schumer was saying that they're sophisticated in a few areas, but many others are not. I don't know that they have homegrown, because very few people there have access to the open Internet. Um, so I couldn't see that, but I certainly could see them contracting with someone who's very sophisticated and, uh, it's really wild. The, the ramifications I saw today that some movies sets are shutting down temporarily because they can't pay anybody because that was hacked. We saw that the, there was the conflict between the motion picture association of America and Google over their efforts to, uh, uh, prevent, um, piracy were not well received. I just said Google and my phone just kicked on with the Google search. <laughs> um, I'll have to figure out how to stop that. So anyway, yeah, that was that was neat. Um, I mean, neat to, to dig into to figure that out. Uh, the Hangouts thing, I'm not uh, I'm not going to be putting I don't know, that, that doesn't that appeals to a younger demographic, I guess. And I don't know about the neatest iOS apps because I'm an Android guy. Yeah, yeah. But I, did, I will say this final thing that I do think the, the wars about iOS and Android, um, it's basically like if I'm in Washington, I like the Redskins and you like the Dallas Cowboys, then it's mainly because where you live, uh, whatever you're used to, you, you think is better. Like Craig Ship's a big Apple fanboy and he's never used an Android phone. And I've never used an Apple iPhone. I like Android, mm -hmm. but I don't trash iPhone. But it's funny because I've seen two people with Windows Phone and they both – I've actually only seen twice in the wild. They actually had a Windows Phone and they both thought it was wonderful. So it proves that whatever phone you're used to you think is better regardless of the merits or demerits of, of the operating system. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything else, Dan, you want to mention? That's uh, the, Apple, the, the Apple TV thing. 
Um, I've heard it's good. I know Craig Ship likes it a lot. Yeah. And Google TV has not been as successful, but and the Chromecast is a neat device. Obviously, it's limited compared to the full featured devices, but I don't really have a need for any of that. I had I have a Chromecast, and I ended up loaning it to my housekeeper because my computer is hooked into my my television set. I've got a Vizio smart TV, so I've got regular television, and then I sw- flip it from that HDMI port to the HDMI port that one of my computers is hooked up to. If I want to watch Netflix, I just drag a window over and uh-huh. expand it and go full screen. It looks great. I can't see a difference between that and the native Vizio app. So be, if you have a computer, and most people do not have this set up, even if they wanted to, their, their old lady wouldn't let them. So run cables through the living room. <laughs> but if you have a computer that is hooked up, I don't see where these things, unless you're talking exclusive content, like some of the Xbox deals, et cetera. Mm. I don't see what you can't do with a computer and having extending your desktop over and just dragging a window and playing it on a big television set. I don't see the difference. The gap that's, between a television set and a computer monitor is almost non-existent now. Yeah, exactly. That's what Jacob does. He does. He's, he has a TV and he drags all his stuff over to the TV and that's what I think. It's, that's something that comes in handy. Um, yeah, the side by side. So I got yeah. my computer screen here, and my yeah. other computer screen, which is could be playing, you know, House of Cards or what yeah, have definitely. you. Definitely. Yeah, no, that, that's that's a good idea. Um, Jacob, what what about you, mate? What's your view on them stories? And you said something about Windows Seven and Windows Eight. Well, Windows, the phone is only av- those music, music things are all, is only available on Windows Phone and Windows Eight. Ah, uh, okay. Good point. Okay, good. Interesting. Okay. All right. Any uh, views in them stories, Jacob? Is that you? Is that Jake? That's, that's Jake? my old dog trying to um, get on tech webcast. Okay. Um, a shame we can't view, bring it up on the, on the screen because that wouldn't have been good to see. Uh, Jacob, are you using them stories, mate? Uh, the Apple TV, I've used it. Yep. It's pretty well. And what are you, pretty- the YouTube app, what do, you, what do you like about it? Well, I don't even have I synced it up and I don't even have to look, make new bookmarks and stuff like that. Yeah, no, definitely. It looks really nice on the on the team. It looks nice app, really clean and easy to use, and yeah, it's a really nice design. I didn't even expect that. Yeah, that may ever, may ever. And what about the Spotify? Mm. After it's in there somewhere, but I it's don't. It's not there yet. It hasn't rolled out to any users yet. Have you got it yet, Jennifer? At, at all? The on what the Spotify, the new Spotify update. Yeah, have you got the new that new? Um, you know, I haven't noticed it. And I, I was running Spotify earlier today, and let me open it up again. In fact, I just closed it before the show, mm. and and see if yeah, I, I see. Can't I, find anywhere, you know? Yeah, yeah I it, don't see it either. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm looking it says, activity. I found. I think ahead, it's, well, I found out what it was. It makes a playlist of your top top tracks in your network, but. Also, if you want to find it, it's in under browse. In the browse. Under browse. Okay. That's where. Let's, let's that's where they look. said. Mm. That's where they said it would show up. As All right, well. let's, I, let's go to. Can I ask a question about that, Brad? Real quick. Yeah, go ahead, mate. Um, Spotify. It there's no. You have to publicly broadcast on Facebook everything you listen to. No, you correct? don't. No, you don't. Did it ever do that? I thought it did that no, initially. It, uh, uh, you, you know, there's an Only, option. There's an yeah, option you can turn it. Off. You can turn it off. The, yeah. op- the options are driven like in a way that they I just have this nightmare. Happens. I got this nightmare scenario. Like, let's say you, you said, "Man, it's funny that YouTube took down all the Rick Roll videos," and my, and my friend says, "What's a Rick Roll?" I said, "They play that Rick Astley song, <laughs> and he's young, right?" And I said, "You know, never." And he's like, he "Didn't know it." And so I then I want to go and like play it, and then I'm like, "Oh no, what, I can't play it because my friends will know and they'll uh, think I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, listening okay, to this okay. song. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can, yeah, okay. yeah, you can just well, disable the fa- the Facebook yeah. integration so it won't post to your Facebook. But the thing is, they make it so it's all sort of automatic. I, I wonder how many people have uh, signed up for it and not known that that sort of happens and they start you know, going on their Mariah Carey yeah. page. Yeah, and, well, exactly. a lot of people, I, I'd wrong. say the majority of people do. I have a friend who's just an average person, not a techie, mm-hmm. you know, not not sure. a, you know, and he, you know, the same thing. So he posted, he's playing some, I don't know, some girly Taylor Swift or I don't know, some stuff, <laughs> some, something that somebody, and somebody called him out on. And then he called me and said, hey, how do they know that I'm listening to this? And I said, oh, <laughs> broadcasting on your Facebook page. You know, so I showed him how to 
disable that. And then another nice feature is like, let's say if I want to listen to something I don't want anyone to know I'm listening to because I might be embarrassed about, you know, how cheesy it is. So Mm -hmm. I'll just go and I'll, for that one, I'll I'll do a private session and we'll do a private session for a few hours until, you know, and then we'll go back to regular settings. You can always do private sessions as well. Netflix has a similar feature like that. And Brad, I just want to let you know, none of us think there's anything wrong with your Barry Manilow record collection. (laughs) (laughs) and he was listening to a little taylor swift i know that really (laughs) look while while we're talking about music i will say i'm I'm not a fan of what microsoft are doing here by releasing so much free music i think it 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 devalues music in the eyes of young consumers where they think everything comes for free i mean how many young people these days actually buy things Like, like literally buy um content that you can't hold movies music all these sorts of things the majority of people you know if they buy anything they'll buy spotify for 10 bucks a month or you know a, a streaming service uh, netflix or something but that it, i think it just puts people in a position where no one really values buying a 20 dollar cd or, or dvd anymore and i think that could be quite damaging to the industry yeah, but, as but a whole aren't you being unrealistic though because they're all watching on youtube right, right. um mm-hmm. And so isn't it sort of like someone in my industry, now my newspapers are free, but it, it's, I look at it like you're saying, no, people should pay for the news, but no one's going to pay for the news. They can get it. If I print yesterday's Drudge Report or Huffington Post and, and mm-hmm. try to get you to pay a dollar for it tomorrow, um, it ain't happening anymore. Right. So it's like uh, the only reason, because of sites like YouTube, that's what put the piracy out of business. You know, the 99 cent move by Steve Jobs to, to make songs cheap um, is what put the you know pirate sites I mean that nobody's you know hey let me burn a copy of your CD nobody's doing that anymore it's no, too much of a hassle not at all. Mm. exactly mm-hmm. um, yeah I, I guess the thing is YouTube maybe the kids are different these days but to me YouTube's not as convenient because it's not always where and how I want to watch yeah, it I, I mean it, it is available but I've got to go to each individual song mm-hmm. and um, you know search find the right version yep. it's not kind of yeah. on tap as I'd I th- want to. You know what? I think the reason why it's done in YouTube is because people might want to pull up a song in particular. It might not be for music discovery, but they want to find a song and they Google it. And, and then the easiest way to listen to it is then to pop it up in YouTube. Mm. So you when you're like Googling the, the song, the it, news, I think I mean, that's why. In Australia, our major newspapers here, you actually have to pay to subscribe. I don't know if the U.S. is the same, but they have premium content. So the latest news is like a dollar a day or something, and you subscribe to it, which is a real pain um, because when you click on it, it gives you the first paragraph, and it says if you want to read more, click here to, to subscribe. So you, you can't share it through any media because they only get the first paragraph. Oh, but, uh, there are ways around that, though. One way around that is to, um, like the New York Times paywall, you can mm-hmm. – you can open it up in an incognito window or a porn window, whatever you want to call it, and uh, often it'll show up there. The Financial Times has a really, really good paywall, but one way you can defeat that is if you get to a story and it says, you know, shows you the first paragraph, they want to be listed in Google, mm-hmm. and, in order, and they cannot show you less than they show the Google bot. So right. what you do is, let's say an article, someone puts pie in face, or what was they threw a ham sandwich at the former yeah. prime minister of Australia, or some crazy thing. So let's say you get to the article, uh, ham sandwich again thrown at Australian prime minister, and it's from you know whatever Murdoch papers mm-hmm. nearest you. So then you just you highlight and copy that exact headline and right-click, search in Google, and you'll pull it up in Google, and it'll say you know the Australian or whatever it is. You click to to it from Google and you'll get the full article. They've actually locked that off with a couple of the papers because I used to do exactly that, grab the first sentence, um, put that in Google as a search term, but that doesn't seem to work anymore, which is is weird because as you said, I, I would have thought they have to index the whole thing, but in the Herald Sun and the, a couple of the other major ones, they, may, maybe if I actually do that Google search in an incognito window, it may work. So that could be the, the trick. Mm. Do, do you buy a lot of stuff off iTunes, Andrew, for music and that, like TV shows and that sort of thing? Um, look, I actually watch most of my TV just public, just straight through the normal TV. I, um, TV networks? I, I do buy some stuff, but not as much. I usually just watch the, the general television. I don't have that much time with a seven-month-old, to yeah, be honest. True, so it's usually just background. Mm-hmm. 
Are you going to use Netflix when it comes to Australia? And what sort of content do you reckon they'll have on here? Oh, look, it really depends. Uh, I think um, you know Murdoch and, and Foxtel and so forth in Australia have got most of the licensing. So mm. uh, I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see what access to content we have here in Australia. Yeah, definitely. I can't wait for it. There's going to be a lot of new streaming stuff coming up next year and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, let's go to Belinda. What about you, Belinda? Um, yeah, I thought the Sony hack thing was interesting. Um, I heard that uh, the hackers got access to the passwords as well with Sony. Yeah. Apparently there was a folder and it was called passwords. That's it. So, yeah, yeah, it was pretty easy for them to access it. And the North Korea link, I wouldn't be surprised if they had something to do with it because the movie about Kim Jong-un, like the interview, they probably didn't look at on look upon it favourably. So they probably got somebody to come in and hack it and try and change it or something like that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they could have done something like do you that. Have a, do you have an Apple TV, cool. Linda? Do you have an Apple TV? Um, I want to get one now that I've heard that the YouTube channel has been enhanced. Yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, I used, I used to have an Apple TV a few years ago and the YouTube channel wasn't very good. It was a bit limited. Mm. But um, it's good to find out that it's been enhanced now and there's better you, features and yeah, everything yeah. like that. What do you watch on YouTube? What's your, what do you watch on there? Um, I usually, if I'm trying to find some, some information out about a topic or something like that, I usually just type it in there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like creating a resume or something like that. Yeah. And music as well, mm-hmm. music videos. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It comes in yeah. for like Vivo and that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually gave we actually gave away an Apple TV just the other day to Kate. who actually won that. Yeah, I saw that. But I know. Kate Bear. What's her name? Kate Bear. Kate Bear. Yeah, that's a great name. Yeah. She won a uh, Apple TV and a twenty dollars iTunes card, and Lisa won an iTunes card as well. So good on them too. And enjoy. Yeah. Join them and uh, and actually a big thank you to uh, Bryce uh, for sponsoring that for us too for giving that away. So good on him. Uh, Steve, what about you, mate? What about, what, what's your view on them stories? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, on the uh, Apple IBM thing, uh, it seems like Apple, for quite a while, uh, didn't get into the enterprise. In fact, they seem to get, get out of it for a while, uh, shutting down their, their rack server they used to have. And uh, I think they got rid of the uh, Mac Mini version of their server. So... Uh, it kind of makes sense with uh, kind of maybe teaming up, partnering with IBM, which has obviously always been into the enterprise uh, type of thing. And Apple works well in more in business. Uh, people picked up the iPads, iPhones for business, and it's worked in really well. So it, it makes sense mm. uh, to perhaps get uh, the IBM software and or back end. Uh, I haven't seen everything that uh, they have uh, available, but uh, it makes sense in that uh, type of thing. Yeah, the the iPad's a great device, isn't it? Isn't it, Steve? Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's not just for content creation anymore. I mean, businesses have really picked up yeah. on it, and yeah, definitely. And uh, when I went to get my washer and dryer from Sears, uh, he took my order on an iPad, and you know, once it was done, he just went to the cash register, and you know, uh, it's supposed to make checkout a lot quicker, but we didn't have a lot of people uh, during that time, so. Even the Telstra guy in the city, the Telstra shop in the city here, they have uh, iPads and you know a lot, a lot of people use them in stores and that, I see. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, um, what else do you want to say, Steve, anything else? Uh, well, a little bit about the Apple TV. I don't really have one and, and kind of what Dan McDermott said, Dude, he has a computer. You up, need one. Uh, he has it hooked up to his uh, TV. Actually, in, in some ways, it'd probably be easier. Even though I have the uh, Mac Mini on the computer and or on the TV, I can actually bring up content that way um the apple tv is great it's it's, it's all in, it's yeah it's a little bit easier and... but i think would be through apple tv because i the, i use xbmc i used to use yeah. plex but it, it was too complicated or it was you know server front end thing that i didn't want so i went to uh, xbmc but then to get what i wanted it was it was so much hacking and i and i upgraded to a new version it broke it and and so something like apple tv i might eventually look into yeah, yeah, get one, mate. Get one for Christmas. Yeah. Get one. I guarantee. Get one. You love it. Uh, can I interject and say something to Steve? You go ahead, Jacob. Xbox Media Center is not around anymore. It's now named Cody. There you go, Cody? Steve. Okay. 
XBMC. Yeah, I haven't really checked just in to it follow for quite up a while. and clarify. Uh, I do think these are great products. It's just in my particular use case scenario, as in Steve's, we yeah. have a computer hooked up to it, so we don't see a bunch of added value with a Google TV or, or uh, Apple TV or even a Chromecast. Mm -hmm. However, if I had a big TV on the wall and a couch and it wasn't hooked up to a computer or an additional TV, maybe in the bedroom or whatever, I absolutely would get one of these products. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's yeah. different use scenario. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It comes down to what everyone, you know. Well, that's the thing. I've got, I've got a big TV set up a 55-inch in the lounge room, a traditional television. And it's okay for me to sort of do things and send it from my laptop or from my MacBook through to there. But for my wife, she just wants to sit down, click on, you know, um, HDMI 3 and grab the the Apple TV remote. So for her, as far as user experience, it, it's really simple. And for yeah. a device that costs a hundred dollars for an Apple TV or fifty dollars for um, the, the Google one, it's you know they're great uh, experiences for the average consumer. And also check on check out that remote app for the Apple TV too, Andrew. That's that comes down here too, mate, for the iPad. Yeah, I've heard. I haven't uh, had a look at that, but um, definitely. If you've got iTunes and hooked up to it, you just yeah, it's very easy to use. Uh, Can I ask you a question, Brad and Andrew in yeah, Australia? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, is 4K a thing there? It's uh, not really a thing. To be there. honest, mate, no, no, it's not. Look, it, it's it's a way for uh, JB Hi-Fi and the big uh, retailers here to try and sell some new TVs because it's the new flavor of the month. But uh, there's there's nothing to run it. I mean, the only uh, thing you can run, just like the states, I think the only thing you can run is the the demo video when friends come over, which goes for six minutes. But um. Yeah, this is a uh, fish, and content. this is the mountain landscape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's just right. like when HD first came out. Remember, they all they would show, they'd show a, a, a lion racing through the, you know, the tweed weeds. But <laughs> I haven't seen any except in a store. Yeah. Uh, but Netflix and Amazon Prime are both, I think, currently working. Or Amazon, yeah, I think they both currently work now. And it makes yeah. you wonder if the broadcast networks are gonna. Uh, be able to do it because they only have so much bandwidth. That's how they went from one yeah. channel to like four channels, right? Like they'll run over here. They have like the main channel, then they have like three sub channels. One might be a, you know, Univision, or one might be a just a weather radar or whatever, and or cartoons. But they'd have to give up probably some of those substations to to get the bandwidth for that because I think you need about twelve megabits to do it. At least that's what Netflix is going to use, and I don't. I haven't seen them in the wild. I mean, it's fantastic in the store; they're gorgeous. But I just, yeah. I wonder I, in, until the major broadcast shows are on 4K. I, I don't. I haven't heard anything about Comcast, which is my de facto monopoly cable provider, mm. um, or any of the broadcast television stations going to 4K. Yeah, and definitely. it's a. I don't know why, because it's so much better. Well, how many channels do you get uh, on your cable system, uh, Dan? How many channels do you get? Oh. It goes up to like 900 and something. I mean, oh, some are not there, but it's a lot. <laughs> Jeez. The thing with well, the 4K, with 4K. The ones they're selling now are probably early technology. By the time it actually comes around and it's usable, I wonder if the, the current TVs are going to be almost seen as old TVs. Um, well, they're probably the thing is, a bit like HD when, when, when it came out, you know? Yeah, and the thing is in Australia, we uh, about three or four years ago, we made a decision whether or not to go with the National Broadband Network, which is effectively fiber the whole country around. It was going to cost billions of dollars to roll out and the political party that was going for that didn't end up getting in and they marginally missed out and it's not the party that I usually support but I was very supportive of, of that rollout because if that had have gone ahead, um, you know, Australia could potentially have been one of the first countries to really embrace 4K because we would have had the bandwidth to do it. So now we're actually going uh, fibre to node and not fibre to the home. So we've got all this beautiful bandwidth, you know, going out to the node, but as soon as we get from the node to the home, it just stalls, you know, using copper again. Yeah. So um, I think we certainly missed an opportunity there because, as you said, um, you, you know, we, we don't have, uh, Dan, the ability to, to really push out 4K at the moment. So it's, it's interesting. That You're probably in the same quandary that we are. In the U.S., I, I'd love to have – I have good internets, 50 down and 10 up. It, it's very reliable and consistent. And it really is that because I've taken like two or three gigabyte files and uploaded them to drive and then downloaded them again and timed it and done the math and converted it to gigabits from gigabytes. And it really is about 52 down and about 12 up. But the problem is most the companies, of course, are going to do as little as possible to keep you a s subscriber and not complaining. And then um, most people don't see a value in it. They, it's good enough for them to check their Facebook Check their email, watch their Netflix and 720p or whatever it is, um, at least here and you guys in March. And so they don't see 
why would I pay ten dollars more or fifty dollars more for gigabit when even if you have it, the other side's got to have it, or it's you know you're not really getting that throughput. So I just don't see that the customer. It's a tough sell, and the customers don't see that they're missing out on anything, which is a shame because the things that, that we haven't even thought of that could be invented, applications for gigabit are just mind-boggling. But and until it's like around, video you know, 3D would be really great through that context. Well, see, sure. 3D television never caught on, and I really doubt if it will. But I think 4K eventually will uh, be the standard. Not now, of course, and probably, you know... Maybe eight to ten years, maybe. Yeah. That's a big maybe. Well, I, I seen a story, Steve, the other day about 8K, 8K video. Did you see that? Hear about that? Yeah, I've, I've kind of heard some rumors. But to me, yeah, 4K. Why would they put out 8K and there's already 4K? Well, we've got the technology for 8K. I mean, when, when 4K came out, at the time that 4K was first started a couple of years ago, they were talking about 4K and 8K, but then they've just dropped 8K like a hot potato, mm. probably for the exact reason Dan is saying, we just don't have the bandwidth. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, we don't even have the bandwidth for 4K anyway. I mean, the only people who are probably buying 4K TV sets are your, your average consumer who... You know, their TV has died, they've got an older unit, and they walk into a shop and say, which one should I get? And the guy behind the counter says, hey, this 4K thing is whiz-bang, and it's the latest thing, and it's awesome, and you should buy this one. But by the time we actually get an, a platform or, you know, an infrastructure that can roll it out, that person's probably bought an old TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, I think the 4K, I think my next TV is going to be a 4K TV. I think. What about you, Andrew? Are you getting a TV anytime soon or buying a new one? I've, I've got a 1920 1080p 55-inch TV. I'm, I've had a about three yeah. years now and I'm very happy with it until yeah. until 4K is able to be delivered properly I'm in no um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with no uh, means the, to move up yes I, I agree I'm happy with HD and stuff you know Fox yeah. out, puts out a great picture on HD channels you know there's so many good channels on there oh don't get me wrong <laughs> if, if there's if there's a better platform available, I'll probably go to it but there yeah. really isn't at the moment no it's not at all no it's not at all what about you um, Jennifer what's your view on all this on 4K, whether or not to get 4K or to yeah. move up to something. I'm not going to be getting 4K anytime soon. I am impressed with it every time I walk into a, a Best Buy and I look at the screen. I'm like, oh, gosh, that's just so beautiful. But, you know, there's, there's not enough content. I think yeah. the content will come soon enough. I think we'll be able to stream it here in the near future. But until then, my my HDTV is gorgeous and works just fine. So, I, yeah. yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm not going to just run out and buy one just because it's out. You know, um, I'll definitely wait. And then I think the next thing will, will be coming and, and maybe even 4K will go obsolete and yeah, they'll jump a couple of yeah, levels. You probably need a good internet connection to play 4K, right, Jennifer? You probably would need a good... I would think so. I, I would think, you know, but I would also think that they would be, be able to get get it down to a level that would be accessible by the majority of people. Okay. But... People really have to upgrade their internet yeah, right definitely. now. I think a lot of people are still on slower internet yeah. speeds. And mine, mine is similar to Dan's. I, I'm 50 down, five up though. That's that's uh, good though, isn't it? That's pretty fast. Yeah. That, that's decent. That's decent. <laughs> uh, hang on. Yeah, Jake, go ahead. Are you going to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, may I interject? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Mine's 120. 130 down. All right, okay, we have to go to the guest now because she's been waiting all this time. Andrew's just yeah. uh, coming to move on. Let's go to the guest, Andrew. Welcome. Um, Andrew, do you want to announce it? Yeah, sure. Uh, we've got um, Marari Kancha on today. Kasha. Uh, Kasha. It's Kancha in the, the show notes here, but uh, we've got Kasha on today, and uh, she's from Akans and uh, here to talk about technology and wearables. How are you doing today? Uh, really well, thanks, Andrew. Hi, Brad. Yep, welcome to the show. And do you have any opinions on them stories or what we spoke about before? Uh, um, a few things. Uh, with the Apple TV, of course, I'd love to have one. But yeah. what we've done is hook up um, a computer, yep. which is the size of the the Apple Mini. So okay. it's just a small box, yeah. um, a massive Mac power beast. Yep. Yeah, that's what we've got hooked up. And, um, you know, regarding Spotify and streaming, one of the things that I love about it is is I've got friends sort of spread all over the world, yep. and it's great to hear the kind of music they're listening yeah, to. Definitely. So yeah, mm. um, yeah, definitely. No, I agree. You find a lot of good music on Spotify, and uh, that you never heard of, right? Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So I, I almost use it to discover new music. Well, I should send some of my music your way then. <laughs> sure. All right, tell us about what you do, and uh, that's in your website and stuff. So. Um, 
I started at Cannes last year, um, completely mm-hmm. sort of you know armed with my savings, mm-hmm. and um, my vision was to create a really great wearable tech company. And the first challenge that we wanted to uh, that I wanted to address was um, that of helping women stay connected to what's really really important to them. So what's important on their phone, and so. So we, had, you know, at that time, Plumora, which is the product we've created, was a hint of an idea, and uh, we've had quite a journey over the last one and a half years, growing the team, um, um, you know, designing and actually building Plumora, which um, connects with the smartphone, and it's a smart bracelet, so it connects with the smartphone and alerts women to notifications that are important to them. Nice one. How much is it to buy? So the retail price would be three hundred dollars for the for Plumora, um, the bracelet and the wireless charging stand. Uh, for on crowdfunding at the moment, it's heavily discounted and it's available from hundred and hundred and sixty nine dollars. That's all right. That's pretty. Yeah. Uh, maybe Christy may need one, Andrew. Quite possibly. So um, you said crowdfunding. Where where about to crowdfunding and um, what what are people saying about the the products and the wearables that you guys have at the moment? Yeah, so we've launched an Indiegogo and we the campaigns um, will be going ahead for another few days, so we're nearing the end of the campaign. We've had really great feedback on the design and how well we've integrated design and technology and, you know, it's, it's jewellery inspired, so it looks like a piece of jewellery. We've had a really, really great response. Um, our challenge has been more to do with just getting the word out there, getting the publicity to be able to get Pumora in front of um, a large group of people. Okay, Jennifer. It's interesting that you say it's uh, jewelry inspired. I think that that's really the, the thing with wearables. I mean, that you know, there's a number of potential wearables around that we can have these days. But I think one of the things, you know, Google um, Glass, for example, that's holding them back is that they're just not stylish and, and fashionable, or you know, something that people want to wear. So it's fantastic that you're going down this path. Um, and really, you know, focused on that, making it something that people want to wear. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been in wearables for seven years now. So I've been in the space developing wearable technology for quite a long time. And what I noticed was, um, and, and I was working on wearables sort of medi- for clinical medical applications, and what I noticed was you could have the best technology in the world, but even patients wouldn't want to wear them if they it doesn't look nice. It's It sounds so silly and superficial. But it's true for us to wear something um, and wear it every day. We really we must love it. Like it's got to fit in with our sense of style. Um, so because it's about feeling good, and so that's why you know when I was um, developing Pumora, I was very focused um, on creating a product that looked beautiful that I could see women wearing every day to the office. Um, to, to the boardroom, out on a walk, to a yoga class, or even, you know, to a special event. All right, Steve, any questions? Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, I kind of agree what you say with uh, wearables um, because they got to be unobtrusive. I mean, if it looks like something like Google Glass, it's, you know, obvious. It's not really going to fit in well with uh, even men. Some men don't want you know, if they look like a Borg, not to make fun of Google Glass, it's, you know, but I'm talking about more of fitting in, uh, you know, fitting in with the uh, day-to-day um, wear, especially women, you know, because they, they want something that's fashionable, that it doesn't actually look like um, a tech device necessarily. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's a wonderful idea. Um, so you, you're talking about you got jewelry that, that can give you notifications. Do you have any other lines uh, that uh, do other things or just basically along um, those lines? And do you, uh, how does it work with um, your applications? Um, does it give you notifications of Twitter or Facebook or something? Yeah. Or Yeah, so what I really love about Pomora is that our, our, its focus is selective connectivity rather than being constantly barraged by information and notifications with the app you choose what's important to you so whether you're at work whether you're at home so in different situations uh, which notification is important is it a phone call is it a calendar alert um, or is it a social media alert an app alert so 
Um, it's entirely up to you which notification is important to you. And so it's the whole principle is around selectively connecting only to what really matters to you so you can focus on the work or relaxing and sort of live in the present can you also be selective within that app itself for let's let's say let's say you put in in twitter i mean instead of giving you every twitter for that you follow can you just put in there perhaps um selective twitter from a certain person or something like that so at the moment we sort of we are in version one and, and what we would like to do with future firmware and software updates is um, apply more intelligent algorithms and more features where you can uh, choose um, who you want to connect. And part of this is also dictated by what um, the, the Apple or Android system allows, what their, their notification centers allows. So I know with phone calls and text messages, we can filter. With Twitter, we'll have to explore that further. Okay. Okay, Belinda, any questions? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask, what sort of styles do you have with the wearables? Yeah, so we've got only one product at the moment, one particular style. So we're a startup, yeah. and that's, this is the first one that we are releasing. And, and um, it's the design is inspired by by the peacock feather, and so even when the bracelet vibrates and glows you can see the eye of the peacock. So it's very subtle, very elegant. And part of, part of the design also, it is it is shaped by thinking of the comfort for the wearer, so how it sits on the wrist. So mm -hmm. there are actually a lot of um, technical challenges as well as comfort challenges that we've overcome with this particular style. Yeah, and what sort of people are you consulting with with the design? Uh, we, we, we've we've done it all ourselves. So we had a yeah. jewelry consultant at the start of the project, and um, since then, you know, uh, we've got a really fabulous uh, product designer, and um, him and I, we've worked together on creating this design. Cool. Cool. Um, what's your view on view on the Apple Watch? So the Apple Watch, I think, I was a little disappointed about it buy it for two reasons one is it is a big chunky screen on the wrist and women typically have smaller wrists as well mm -hmm. so even if they reduce the screen size it's still a very chunky piece uh, and when i was looking at the design and the kind of straps i could see that there were similar challenges that they were overcoming with um with their decisions that they made in the end and so yeah that was very clever because when you start developing these you realize just how hard a lot of the problems are with even things like a custom fix so it fits everyone perfectly. Um, and so I thought they did a really good job of that. It's just this big screen on the wrist um, that doesn't win me over. Secondly, you know, as a sort of fundamental principle, I think, you know, for a healthier life, selective connectivity is, is, is important so you can actually concentrate and focus on what you're doing. Whereas with the Apple Watch, you would just constantly be getting updates and, um, you know, you, you are barraged with a lot of information directly to your wrist. And maybe some people prefer that, but it's just more distracting, um, more interruptions. And the last point that I wanted to make was that with the Apple Watch, it is changing how you interact with with something and having, um, you know, sort of lifting up your wrist and shoulder and tapping away on it. It's it's a very different um, behavior. Whereas with um, Plumora, for example, what we've done is just a gentle tap, which is a very discreet movement. So um, it's a lot more subtle, a lot more elegant. So even if you're in a meeting room, for example, Rather than lifting up your wrist and bringing it, you could just very subtly tap on it and dismiss an alert. Good stuff. What sort of phone do you have? Um, I've just switched over to Android. Oh, nice. What made you do that? Um, I couldn't couldn't keep up with just the poor battery um, usage that I was getting with the Apple phone. What, I, what iPhone? And, do you have the iPhone six or the five or? Um, I had the iPhone five. Okay. And yeah, just the battery was dying on me. And then they were releasing so many updates and I didn't want to update my phone every second week. 
So, yeah, that's, I thought, well, why not try Android? So, okay, well, enjoy it. What is he using a new Android phone? What phone do you have on Android? Uh, HTC One M8. Okay, nice. Yeah, so nice it's That's just fun. been one month. Yep. So, it is a bit of a change getting used to, getting used to, yeah, using Androids. It's different. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> used Android for about a month, but then I went back to Apple because I liked the apps better. That's true. That's what I'm sort of struggling at the moment because there are some things I definitely love about um, this new phone and there are other things that are very irritating. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, for Pomora, we will be releasing both um, iOS and an Android apps. Cool. Oh, wait, Jennifer, any questions? Sorry, I have my uh, thing on mute there. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, I am. I'm a, I'm a lover of both Android and iOS, and I love wearables, and I have a, an LG G watch and the Google Glass. I'm getting a Samsung Gear S here out within the next day or two as well. But the one thing about all those things is they're not all that fashionable. You know, they kind of stand out like a sore thumb, right? So I'm yeah. really excited to see you you coming out with this. And I, I'm wondering, so right now... It, you did the Indiegogo, and is that the way people can can purchase product still just through the Indiegogo, or have you completely launched already? Are you ready for no, so, to sell? Okay. So we've developed a prototype, and our next step would be to go into EU manufacturing because um, even though it's product prototyping, we've designed it for for manufacture. So uh, the next step is to go into EU production, and for that, we need a higher volume. So. Um, that's what, you know, that was the motivation behind the crowdfunding campaign. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And All right. Yes, so yeah. the best when, way, sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say, when do you anticipate after the the campaign is over, when do you anticipate being able to, um, hopefully if all goes well, <laughs> knock on wood, uh, ship product? Are you looking yeah, at Yeah, so it'll be about seven months, seven months to... Uh, manufacture, get the appropriate clearances, package and ship. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And yeah, um, the campaign is on pumora.com forward slash Indiegogo. Okay. So that'll take you to the campaign link. Are there any and, other competitors doing what you're doing um, really centric to the, the female market? Uh, there are a few. Um, most of them are in the US. There are a couple. However, they are they differ um quite a lot on the style so um there are a few like the style is quite chunky so there's um a company that's doing a, a ring there's another company doing a bracelet and they are very very chunky and even big companies like for example intel has brought out um a, a smart bracelet for women however it's you know when i look at those products I don't see women being able to just wear them every day with a mix of outfits and actually be able to wear them to work, um, especially more professional corporate environments where women are expected to dress well and you can't wear very loud jewellery. So you could still wear statement pieces, but they've still got to be elegant and more discreet. And so... Yeah, it's quite, it's quite subtle. Yeah. And so that, that's what, like, you know, I will, I will put more out to a few Christmas parties um, over the last couple of weeks and no one thought it was wearable tape. They just thought it was a gold bracelet. Wow. wow. And so, the prototype you've got, it's, it's flashing and it changes color and things when you get different messages and so forth through at the moment. That's pretty cool. Yes. So uh, with the app, uh, you know, you can personalize the color so you can associate colors to different notifications. And you can also make the colors as subtle as you want so you can reduce the brightness level. Um, and what's um, really great is that it's, it's, it's a subtle but powerful notification because color does influence emotion as well. And so it's also adding a little bit of joy during the day. All right, Kasha, where can they get hold you if they want to have any more questions for you or they can want to uh, buy it or check it out? What's the Yeah, thing? so plumora.com slash Indiegogo is the link and okay. we are offering Plumora in 18 carat wow. yellow gold finish and white gold finish. So there are two options. And if they want to get in touch with me, you can just email me um, on hello at accounts.com. 
Okay. That comes through to me. So good stuff. Yeah, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, if you can just put that link in the chat for us, I'll put that in the show notes so people so they can check that out. I'll also put a link to your Facebook too, in the show yes. notes as well. Oh yes, Plumora Bracelet is our social handle. So, yep. um, yep. social media handle. Yep. Uh, good stuff. And um, did you enjoy the show? Did you enjoy being on the show? Oh, I loved it. This is the first time I've done anything like this. It's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I've got to go back and listen to all the previous episodes now. <laughs> We've had a lot of guests on over the year, and uh, that's yeah. why I'm bringing up uh, this uh, topic. Andrew Cunningham, uh, have you had any uh, – what's your, what's your favorite guest over the 2014? Oh, wow. That's that's a hard question. Um, look, I've, I've got to say I always love of having Chris Voss on the show. And, um, was he ever on the show? I can't remember if he, he was on or not. Yeah, he's been on a couple of times. Oh, this yeah, year. So, um, okay. yeah, he's, he, he brings quite a vibrance. And he does. Uh, look, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to sound generic, but I, I enjoy all of the guests that we have on the, the show. I think Renee Ritchie was fantastic hey, Renee having Ritchie. him on mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, earlier this year. But, um, you know, we, we love all our guests. So it's, it's been a great year. And I, I've really enjoyed, um, you know, with you guys hanging out yeah, and, uh, you know, being. A part of the, the interview with everybody, and yeah, yeah it's, it's been fantastic. Definitely, and there's gonna be more next year to come, come as well. Netflix and you know more other stuff. It's gonna be good. Uh, Andrew Cunningham, what about you? What's what's your fun of the show? When we're, we're gonna get hold of you, man? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's uh, been a great show, and uh, I really love the um, you know the, this device, the Pomoro. Yeah. Um, it's it's fantastic, and I see a real market for it. And if you want to get a hold of me, I am on Facebook and Twitter as Cunning Drew. And you can also get me on the Zafo app and be sure to download the Rewind app, RWND. Um, yeah, okay, cool, man. All right, what's going on with Zafo? Any news on that? I know we're doing a few things over Christmas. So um, no news at the moment, but there's, there's always a lot happening and 2015 is going to be a great year. Um, okay, let's look around to see what's going on. Um, uh, let's go to Jacob. What about you? Ah, uh, every episode's a good episode. Yep, yep, yep. What's yep. You, any? Have you got any highlights? Not really. It's just there's so many I keep forgetting. Well, well, I'm sure you like them all, mate. That's right, Brad. And you can follow me at jazzbot Yep, you can get me on Twitter at Brad Odden Tech Webcast. We're back in January uh, 2015, a couple of weeks. We're back in a couple of weeks. Um, what's Andrew saying? Okay, let's go to Blinda. What about you, Blinda? Um, my favourite interview was one with Steve Malks because oh, yes, Steve. he knows a lot about, about television and I'm does, really indeed. into TV. So, yeah, that was fun talking to him. Yep, definitely. And all the other guests have been pretty good as well. So it's a great show. You've been listening to Tech Webcast for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. I'm glad you invited me on. No, no problem. Happy to have have you on, Belinda. And it's good to have, um, you know, new voices on and, you know, definitely. Yeah. Uh, It's been um, fantastic having you on this year. Oh, thank you very much, Andrew. you've You've been terrific as well. So, yeah, it's great to have your technical knowledge and that sort of thing. Yes. about various issues. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks for the uh, testimonial too, Belinda, for the on the Tech Webcast. Yeah, too. no problem. Very good message. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, and yeah. I was yep. just going to say you can catch me at, um, at BDemi. That's on Twitter. Okay. Oh, sorry about just Rachel's sending me messages. I can't. She's, I'm being, okay, uh, um, <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, okay, follow Belinda on Twitter. That's great. That's great stuff. Uh, Steve? I think uh, uh, it's a great show today. Um, uh, Kesha is a great idea with fashionable tech is really going to work. And uh, Dan McDermott, of course, uh, he's hard to keep up with because he knows so much. So uh, he's gonna, he's yeah. leaving me behind already. And uh, yeah. you can find me uh, on uh, Twitter as chatterbox underscore live. And uh, thank you to Steve for the hard work you've done over the year, mate. And you're putting on you know, with all the videos and that sort of stuff. And Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Um, all your hard work and uh, yeah, the guests are um, amazing. Yeah, yep. thanks, mate. Uh, Jennifer, what about you? Well, uh, I thought the show was fantastic and a great year of shows 2014. I can't believe this is already almost the end of the year. Yeah, so, thank you for letting me a puppy a part of it. I've been, I loved every moment of it. No and as far as where people can find me online, 
uh, check out, um, I'm on Twitter at J R U G G I E R O. So that's J Ruggiero or Jennifer com, and also get nerdy with it.com. All right. Good so. stuff. Jacob, you want to mention your podcast coming up, coming back? Yes. Tech cluster. All right. Tell us about it. Give us a quick rundown. On- well, right now it's just going, we're going to start slow and get about bigger. Really? Really? Yeah, what we're going to do is just start with new stories, then start branching out. Okay. Start, try to get some more viewers, viewership. Listeners, you mean? Yes. Listeners, yeah, listeners. Um, they, I think Jennifer's said, been on that podcast before, hasn't she? A couple of times. I have been on it a few times. Yeah, mm. a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's, um, yeah. So I thought, and, yeah, I thought Jacob would be a good, suitable person to bring it back, and uh, yeah. Should be good. Yep. Thank you. Thank no you. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Who else have we missed? Any? Have we missed anyone else? Um. Do we get Steve? Yeah. You got, yeah, you got Steve. You got Steve. Yeah. Andrew, anyone to say anything else before we go, Andrew? No, just that it's been fantastic having everybody on, and uh, Jody is missed today, but she's oh, been Jody's wonderful missed. this year as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. She's been on here for the most of the year, and she's done a great job, and um. Yeah, great stuff, and I uh, hope you all listen next year again. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. And you want to wrap up, mate? And that has been uh, Tech Webcast, and uh, thank you for being on the show, everybody. And this was episode 318, and it's the Christmas episode, and we should be back around middle January. We'll let you know when we're back. Thank yeah, you for listening for the year from Brad, myself, and uh, the rest of the crew. It's a very Tech Webcast Christmas, and see you next year. Webcast The hosts and guests are unsurpassed uh, Tech Webcast Cause technology moves so fast Tech Webcast ha, Stick around and you're gonna have a blast Yeah Tech 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 Webcast ha, ha. Tech 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 Webcast Big ups to Andrew, to Brad, Jody, Steve, and Jennifer!